members, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? Pretty good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Um, it looks like your ice already melted from here. <laughs> I still got... Yeah. I think it's just an artifact of the new glasses, but... The, the new upscale glasses. They're very nice. They are very nice. It's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. It's a little hard to judge how much you're pouring in there. The shape on the inside. That's (laughs) okay. Yeah. (laughs) That's not a problem. I'm sure you don't have a problem with that at all. No, no, that's fine. Um, Whatever it is, it's probably not enough. Well, I was fixing to say for your sake, right? You're going to be adding more later anyway. Almost certainly. (laughs) That's the problem with drinking is that once you start, you just keep doing it until you go to bed. Yeah. All right. Starting early tonight. Yeah, yeah. And that's the problem with the podcast at the time that it is. <laughs> See, and I was thinking, like, we were talking the other day. All right, well, you got to gotta curtail the drinking maybe a little bit. And so the way to do that is to make cocktails because then my my inherent laziness kicks in. Absolutely. And because, uh, you know, cocktails <laughs> take takes some time. effort. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but I've been doing that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there are some simple ones like a martini. It doesn't really take a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. But that's not what I've been doing. I've been doing sours where I have to like, you know, pull the shaker Gotta out. Get the and, shaker like, out you know. and do the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I can't do I can't do a cocktail at five o'clock. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> that's probably going to be a rough night or yeah. a really early night. One of the two. <laughs> and yeah. I don't want either of those. Um, so it. Just just whiskey. Yeah. Just no, whiskey tonight. Nothing wrong with some just whiskey. Yeah, and it's uh I don't know. Do you I, let's talk it, about that? I might as well. Like. <laughs> okay. Um it is Jack Daniels, but it is not Jack Daniels, old number seven, Jack Daniels. It's Jack Daniels that bottled everybody and knows and loves, by the way. <laughs> right. I, I I can't disparage it too much. I drank an awful lot of old number seven <laughs> yeah. in my twenties. Yeah, um, um, I think everybody did. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then um, I developed a sense of taste and moved on <laughs> from that. And uh, yeah, I haven't really drank much Jack Daniels since then. Like there's some things like they they have a um, I got a single barrel rye of theirs that I thought was actually very good. Yeah. Um, I've had single barrels that were. Good, but not worth the price, as far as I'm concerned. I know yeah. you were real big on Gentleman Jack. I was for, to say I drank Gentleman Jack for a while. Yeah, um, and I liked it, but like yeah. I say, it was a little pricey too, though. That one never really did it for me. I, I, I don't think. I mean, like I certainly it was better than old number seven, but again, yeah. like not yeah. really worth the price. Um, so, but I, I saw this bottled in bond on the shelf for Christmas, and. Uh, I was like bottled in bond, like you you can r- fairly rely on that. Like yeah. there's a bunch of rules uh, yeah. about bottled in bond, so you, you tend to bunch of government rules. They they are, um, and like almost all government rules, they were lobbied for by the whiskey industry way back then. This was the first of the, actually, this is kind of an interesting story, right? Like yeah. so, the bottled in bond act was one of the, um, if not the, I think it actually was the first you know, quote unquote, consumer protection law um, legislation that was enacted by the federal government. But like all of these things, mostly it protected the producers, not the consumers. Yeah. Um, But there were real problems of um, bootleg isn't the right word, although it's the first word that comes to mind. Yeah. I mean, my Um, understanding is people just like making, I don't, making not good whiskey and doing well, tampering and, and, with it and passing it off as being something else as well. Yeah. So, um, they were, you know, like aging whiskey takes time, obviously yeah. this is aging. Um, and it adds some things, uh, you know, uh, sugars and from the woods and, and colors and so forth. And so people were shortcutting the aging process and just adding colors, yeah. um, including things like, spittoon juice yeah exactly (laughs) like tobacco spit and things like that to get the appropriate color um and they were also uh passing them off as brands that were well known when they weren't produced there they were like faking labels and things like that yeah so um anyway so they uh the 
the big whiskey producers got together and lobbied for these consumer government pro- control. Yeah. These consumer protection acts, um, that, uh, you know, did some things to protect the public, but they also did things to protect these producers, yeah. which is really what it was about for them. I, yeah. I suspect, um, Anyway, so there's a bunch of rules about uh, bottled and bond. Um, it has to be um, four years unless age stated. Um, has to be a hundred proof in the bottle. Um, I think it's like it has to be a hundred and twenty proof in the barrel. Although yeah. I'm not a hundred percent on that. Yeah. Of course, it has to be. Uh, well, it has to be from um, the same distilling season. Uh, like it, you know, from like one distilling group in the same distilling season. So they can't, um, mix barrels from different seasons to oh, create it. I and gotcha. so, forth. um, okay. and, uh, of course the most important thing for the government side of it is that it has to be, um, aged in a government bonded, uh, distilling or distillery. Oh, really? um, which means that they get to put a tax sticker on it Yeah, and tax it. And of course, get, get their, get their fair shake. Now that, doesn't really matter much anymore because all legal distilleries are government bonded now. But at the time that was a big, deal. yeah. In the 19th century or whatever, when this was enacted, it was, um, yeah. And so there's was, some assurances more that it's not spittoon spit in there and yeah, that type of exactly. thing. Exactly. Or just yeah. whatever caramel coloring or, yeah. or you shoe know, polish. shoe polish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like leather polish or whatever. So, um, but it, you can kind of like, there's some things that you can expect when you get, Bottled, bottled and bond. bond. Yeah. Uh, and so I like to try everybody's bottled and bond because they are different because obviously yeah. they use different, they still use different mash bills. And yeah. th- this is a really long talk about whiskey to start things <laughs> off. I, there was a little government stuff in there, I suppose. But, yeah. um, and uh, so, but I thought I would try Jack Daniels. And um, it's good. I like it. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> and it's no more expensive, I don't think, than a regular bottle of Jack Daniels of old number seven. Hey, yeah, definitely better. the quality is better, I think. Yeah. Um, part of it is probably just that it's higher proof because yeah. old number seven is, is bottled at 80 proof. Yep. It's just like, to me, it's just really watered down. Um, you can really taste that charcoal when it's watered down like that. Yeah. Um, the, the charcoal filter that they use. So like, to me, when I drink Jack Daniels now, like, the charcoal taste is kind of overwhelming. Just, yeah, it's too much. Um, at a higher proof, that's kind of numbed a little bit. Yeah. And uh, and I, I like you know I just am getting some other flavors. I'm not like real good at that kind of thing. But there's yeah. like and there's something on the finish of this that I can't identify. It's like a flavor that I recognize. Yeah. Don't know what it was. Is you weren't any help? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> um. But it like I like it, and then uh, I'm not noticing it as much tonight. But uh, last week, um, I guess when I was drinking this last, uh, there was like definitely a banana note that I picked yeah. up. I'm not a fan of banana particularly, but it works here. Yeah, and uh, I didn't know this uh, until you mentioned it. Like I say, once, but once that was in my head, I was like, oh, okay, I, I do kind of sense some of that. Yeah, and that's kind of how it worked for me last week. I was like, what is this? Oh, and then yeah. it was like at the yeah. top. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It was like the note that, that really stood out. Yeah. Um, but whiskey's fun like that because every time you drink it, like you pick up some different things, like even the same bottles over and over. Yeah. Know. You know the stuff that's different. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it like matters, uh, you know, probably like what you ate for lunch affects <laughs> it. And yeah. like, um, you know, did I have uh, some soda or water or whatever? It's almost always water for me beforehand but yeah. you know because i don't really drink sodas and stuff like that i drink whiskey and water that's <laughs> those are those, those are, are your the liquids. things that i consume <laughs> yeah um so uh anyway uh it, i'm i'm glad i bought it i'm yeah. don't know that i'm gonna go out and buy another bottle when i finish this one but if you were walking around and didn't see anything of note you would pick it up yeah if they didn't have wild turkey in a store or something i'd, I'd consider picking this up as just yeah. like a kind of over-the-counter type yeah. replacement generic yeah, yeah. Um, generic whiskey. i mean there's a whole bunch of things that i would pick above this though oh yeah uh, i hear you yeah. Yeah. um so all right so you i guess you have a you have something you really want to talk well, about so I mean, let's, no, let's start the with the big, news of the day the big news of the day is at least as of when we're recording there is still no speaker of the house Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what the latest news today is, but as of yesterday, I think they had taken 10 votes 
and Kevin McCarthy had still not crossed the finish line of having enough votes to take the speakership. Yeah. Um, which is, I don't know. I mean, it's entertaining to me because I'm just sitting back watching because the, the news is all like, oh, my God, you know, they're never going to be able to govern. They can't even pick a speaker and they can't do anything until there's a speaker. And this is just like the worst thing in the world. And I'm just kind of like, eh, if they're going to be gridlocked like this, I think that's good for the country. <laughs> like the, the less they do, the better as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, the problem with... Um with the way the government runs now is that it doesn't matter whether they're legislating or not. Yeah. That, um, all these agencies and little they have the real groups. Control. Yeah. They're, they're the ones making rules these days. So yeah, there's definitely something to that, but you, you still don't really want all three chambers to be working in unison together. No, but even if they were all working, they wouldn't be working in unison right now. I don't think. Well, not right now, but like, like generally speaking, though, mm-hmm. like like when um, the Democrats had all three chambers, like that. Yeah, they still weren't working in. They unison. still weren't working in <laughs> unison, and that's something else that just kind of boggles my mind. So there's, I think there's twenty, if I'm not mistaken, and they're Freedom Caucus Republicans mm-hmm. that are like are the holdouts. Which I yeah. mean, they've they've actually last night some people went as far as to compare them to the Taliban uh, because yeah. they were like terrorists. You know, they're just they're holding the government hostage. Is well, the words and they're they build kept a, using. They're billed as the right wing of the right wing oh yeah uh, they're the extremists or whatever yeah Yeah. the super extremists you know um and but so anyway so they're what i don't do you agree with that assessment that they're the extremist i mean they're definitely they're they're definitely more extreme i mean i don't know depends on what you define as extreme in what sense maybe yeah i mean they're just i mean yeah it i mean they're definitely outside the mainstream like i don't know Mm -hmm. really I mean, like a lot, bunch of them are election deniers. So, like, take of that okay. what you will. You know. They're, but what about policy Trump stuff? Back. Where do they um, fall on policy stuff? You know, I don't know. I mean, they're members of the Freedom Caucus. So, mm-hmm. but I don't know a whole lot about the Freedom Caucus to be honest. So, I okay. don't really know where they kind of fall on. Like, if I would really support. I mean, the Freedom Caucus sounds good. Yeah, but, but it's it's probably not it's like not, Ron Paul's Liberty yeah, Caucus. Yeah, I was going to say it's, yeah. it's probably not like a what we would consider like. Uh, Freedom Caucus, but I mean, they're, they may not be horrible, but they're not going to be where we're at. Yeah. Do you know, do you know where they are on the war thing? I don't. Um, I'd be interested to find that out. Yeah. Um, but hmm. it's interesting to me that they're they're So they're holding all of this up in that. Well, I just got to thinking yesterday when I was listening to the news and stuff, I was like, you know, why don't more Republicans and even Democrats like be that stick in the mud that everybody has to work around to get your support. You remember, um, I guess it was 2019. Yeah, that seems right. I guess it was 2019 when Before AOC. The Great Reset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when AOC and uh, Ilhan Omar and uh, Rashida Tlaib and like uh, that whole group was Kinda elected came in, in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they were they had enough votes to keep Nancy Pelosi from getting the speakership. Yeah. Um, and they, like, there was talk about them doing exactly this. This was, yeah. Oh, this is the exact same that, situation. Except yeah. that they didn't do anything. Yeah. If you recall, like they yeah. ended up like not forcing Nancy Pelosi into any concessions. Yeah. Well, and that's, at all, except like she might've given up some, um, like committee assignments to them or whatever. But, yeah. you know, they were talking about they were going to force a Medicare for all vote. They were going to force minimum wage, uh, raising a minimum oh, yeah. wage and all that stuff. They didn't junk. do any of that. Yeah, that's true. Um, I had forgotten about that, but you're mm-hmm. right. This is the same type situation. And it does sound like at least... So the other thing that from what I was gathering yesterday is the, this group, like they've got a list of demands, but <laughs> when when Kevin gives into some of them, they just give more demands. Like they don't, they don't like bid because that's the reason they were calling them terrorists because like, so generally like when you have a list of demands and those are met, you, you know, you let the hostages go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that, that's not happening here. And, and that, like I say, it's like committee stuff. Like that's, that's kind of what, what some of their demands yeah, were. I heard one of the things was, um, uh, several of their, um, people as members of the rules committee, which is so. probably the most powerful committee in yeah. the house of representatives because 
they can like they control whether bills come to the floor. They yeah uh, control the um the rules of debate on bills or whether there can even be debate. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, which is totally inappropriate as far as I'm concerned. Like it's definitely not the way our government's supposed to work. But but that is how it operates. Yeah. Um, and that so that was some of it. And also they had wanted um. Make, to make it easier to remove the speaker, so mm-hmm. like a less percentage of whatever to have him removed. Yeah, they were moving. I, like I heard about that one too. They were yeah. uh, they were trying to move the the number of people that needed to um, request that the speaker be removed from five to one. Oh, is that right? So, yeah, I didn't so know the exact number. So a single person, yeah, yeah. could uh, could ask to have to could force a vote to have, have the speaker him, removed. Right. <laughs> um, that's kind of interesting. Which yeah, that could create some chaos. Yeah, there's. How many is it? Four hundred and thirty-five. Yeah. Uh, members of Congress. Like, what really is the difference between five and one in that? Yeah, you've got a scenario. Figure. Well, you can have one guy that would be me, like every day, like <laughs> stepping up to the podium. You know. I would like to move that the House Speaker be removed. <laughs> yeah, like and that was like if I was in Congress and that was like I could do that every day. Like I'd be walking <laughs> up there. You know what time it is. Like. <laughs> So eyes, any, any eyes? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Every day you get a couple of more, you know, (laughs) (laughs) maybe Yeah. you go from three to six, you know? Um, I, I think that it's, uh, you know, I actually think that it's fair for them to like push for things like committee assignments and so forth, because, um, one of, one of the things that happens increasingly in Congress is if you're not part of the status quo, you're left out of everything. Yeah. Well, and they've on said, both like, sides, that's, like Democrats that's, and Republicans. Th- this group has decided like they're not going to be the that they're going to mm-hmm. they want to force some stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I find that interesting too. Um, I I think that uh, if you're in a position to negotiate for more power to let somebody have their gavel, hey, okay, why not do it? Yeah, yeah. so. Um, uh, It'll be interesting to see. I mean, yesterday there was starting to be at least some talk of, you know, he might not be able to get, Kevin may not be able to come over the finish line. Like he might not, he might not make it. (laughs) Um, I I heard that they, uh, like there were several people that voted for a freshman um, house of uh, a freshman representative, like his first term to, <laughs> to <laughs> well, be speaker. There, or something. Yeah. There like, was some of funny. that. They nominated um, a couple of them nominated mm-hmm. Donald Trump. Oh so, yeah. I heard about yeah. that too. Cause you know, with the speakership, you don't have to be a member of the house to, to right. be the speaker of the house. Yeah. So, and that would be an interesting direction to take it. Like I'm not that that would ever happen, but I think that would keep him from running for president. <laughs> he may be too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Got to keep the house in line. Hey, he may decide that's a job he wants to just keep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It might be more power <laughs> there. May, he may decide, that, hey, I can have a lot more fun doing this than I can as president. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny, though, is that the, the legislative branch doesn't exercise any power really anymore. Yeah. It don't. But what, what I was looking forward to from this particular house is if they're going to do any type, because they do the investigations and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And if they were really going to dive into any of this, like go after Fauci or, and I don't really think that we're going to get any, any of that. And if we do, it'll be like a couple of days of, and it'll be over. Yeah. But I mean, that could be something interesting to come out of it. In in some ways, I think, God, what a waste of time when you say stuff like that. Like, oh, let's yeah. start going after Fauci or, um, you know, really pushing to have an audit on the uh, weapons and money sent to Ukraine or, yeah, um, I don't know, uh, dozens of other things, right? Yeah. You can come um, up with those, yeah. yeah. That are, well, at least the Ukraine thing I would see as being reasonable because it's like money for money. But like a lot of that stuff, the investigations and just like chasing after people. It's not going to go anywhere. It's just, and it's just wasting our money. Yeah. Like we're paying those guys to be up there. Now yeah. I wish we weren't. Yeah. Well, oh. I, I would rather them be doing that, by the way, than passing legislation. <laughs> yeah. Um, that reminds me though, there, oh gosh, I can't think of what lobby he's a part of, but... um Scott Morrison, you remember that name? Vaguely. He was the former PM in Australia. Okay. Um, and he is now, um, you know, some sort of representative there. Yeah. And he was in a lobbying group in D.C. Like he was also like on the board or something of some lobbying group in D.C. 
Yeah. Some people were making an issue out of it because that is clearly like a foreign principle. Like he's, <laughs> he's actually in the parliament in yeah. Australia and on the board of some lobbying group in DC. Interesting. <laughs> right. Um, but I was thinking about that because I was like, nobody does that in the U S yeah. Right. Like once you've been president in this country, yeah. You don't take any political offices after that. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the pinnacle of your career yeah. um, in politics. And you, then you, you go you into- You build your library and you call it a day. Yeah, you go into lo- uh, lobbying or whatever. You, yeah. You've got the contacts. You make your money in the private sector after that. Like, yeah. And you can make up plenty of it. Just ask Obama. Oh, yeah. Right? So, um, <laughs> and I was thinking about that in the context of like what our founding fathers would think of that. Yeah. Like- and I, I suspect that our founding fathers thought that, like, you may serve in the highest office in this land, and then you would go back to business. Yeah, because go back to the farm. Because your retirement from the government was nothing. Was not supposed to be enough for you to live off of forever. Yeah. Like the benefits that you got from that position, like, were not supposed to be something that you could live off of for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um. And in fact. Like the federal politicians weren't supposed to be full time politicians. Like yeah. they, you know, there's a requirement set in the Constitution that they must meet once a year. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's the requirement. They have to meet once a year. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we we pay them an awful lot of money to work less than bankers and yeah, um, and really accomplish nothing. At least nothing good for us. Yeah. Just a thought. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> um, and spe- <laughs> while we're talking about the house anyway, uh, I-, I did want to spend a little bit of time on this guy, George Santos, the, the representative elect from New York. Yeah. Um, who, who has been exposed as a, as a liar. Yeah. <laughs> and he's admitted to it. It's not even yeah. like accusations at this point. He was like, yeah, I, I, I definitely I fudged exaggerated. my resume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Bit. Um, now I think this is hilarious. Oh yeah. I, I, I really do think that this is funny. And the thing that I think is most funny about it is that people, you know, pearl clutching about this guy lied to get elected yeah. <laughs> about can, where he went to school. Can you believe that this guy lied to get elected? He shouldn't even be allowed to go to Congress. Now think of what kind yeah. of a, a precedent that sets. If, right. especially if Congress tries to do it because he's saying he's not, yeah, he's, he's not saying he's going to stick around. And, and at least as of, I mean, it was probably a week ago now, um, there were quite a few, um, congressmen that were like, yeah, we're going to, um, like bring him up on sanctions and like, like punish him and do all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, like what kind of president is that going to set? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you guys don't want to be held accountable for your lies. Yeah. <laughs> and I, Especially your <clears throat> campaign lies. Like yeah. of all the type of lies to be held accountable for, like what you said during the campaign, you really want to be held to that stick. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the part that I actually want to talk about just briefly here. Cause I don't think that's, it hadn't been a story for a week. Like it got yeah. some press for a little bit and then yeah. it kind of fell by the wayside. But <laughs> once it was time to start electing a speaker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the things he lied about was like where he went to school. Yeah. It turns out he doesn't have a degree at all, which I also <laughs> which is think even is better. Funny. Yeah. Um, but uh, where he went to school, um, his work history, like who he'd worked for. Yeah. Um, he claimed to have worked for some banks or something that turns out that he worked for a contractor that, did some work for the banks or something. I mean, <laughs> right. it was like really like a, you know, twice removed yeah, <laughs> essentially right. from who he claimed to have worked for. Um, and, but I think the big one is that he lied about his Jew ishness. Oh where, yeah. Um, cause he, like he, he claimed to be Jewish and then people called him out on it and he was like, no, I said Jew ish. Like there's a hyphen there. Um, <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> but that's, that's great. That's not how it went out on the the letter or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that that's probably why people are most upset because it's just one of those things. Yeah. But to me, these things that he lied about are like the least important things that you could lie about in a campaign. Yeah. Like his <laughs> demographics yeah. are really not an issue to me. Yeah. The issues. 
are an issue to me. Yeah. Like, where is he on policy? If he didn't lie about his policy stuff, then he's actually a better campaigner than most, I right? would say. <laughs> More honest in the campaign. Because I don't care where he went to school. Yeah. I mean, none of this matters to me because he's a representative in New York. But yeah. um, but even but, if he was our representative. Yeah. If, yeah. He, if he went out there and said that he was, um, you know, for uh, uh, bringing our troops back home and um, would... Uh, you know, help Alabama push for defend the guard legislation in the state or something. And, and, yeah. and then he went up there and he was like, let's appropriate everything to Ukraine and uh, <laughs> let's send more troops into Syria. And, you know, let's go back into Afghanistan. Then I would have a real problem. Yeah, absolutely. But if he said that he, that those were his policy positions that he was, you know, he wanted to bring all the troops back home and push for defend the guard legislation in Alabama. And it turned out that he didn't go to, University of Alabama, he didn't go to, he went to community college and dropped out. Yeah. I don't care right? if he goes up there and he does the things that he said he wanted to do, or at least tries to. Yeah, absolutely. It, it seems to me that these, the, the kinds of things that he lied about are the least important. Now I can understand the concern about, well, he lied about this. Yeah. What, what else is he lying gonna, ab yeah. uh, about? Like, I, I get that, but man, this is definitely a wait and see moment as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And this also brings up my, um, you know, my little uh, pet issue, which is um, we don't need term limits. We need immediate recall. Yeah. Cause because that it, way, <laughs> if they don't follow through with their campaign promises, you can start taking action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> before their term's over. Yeah. And if they do follow through with their campaign promises, then they can serve forever. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you want them doing. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Anyway, I just thought that this was a funny little story that yeah, that, um, was... that really uh, created some waves when it first came out, and I did not understand why. Right. <laughs> it was just like, so what? Yeah. <laughs> Good for him, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, well, you know, yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't want to hire him. <laughs> yeah, you don't think so? You're not going to trust whether he puts on this recipe? After this, no, you but, just call the, call the, what you would call it? Well, that's another one of the things that I don't get about the whole story is like, how could this not have been known while the campaign was going on? Yeah. Like, why didn't anybody check this out anyway? Yeah, because that or, could have been a campaign ender. Mm -hmm. It's really surprising that the, particularly the Democrats or somebody didn't come up with this mm -hmm. throughout the campaign. Well, I think that they, I, I bet that they did. This is, yeah. this is my thoughts on this. Cause I, I was thinking about this a little bit. Yeah. Um, I bet that they did find out during the campaign and they thought that it would be more damaging yeah. to wait until after he was elected really? to, to bring out this information, yeah. um, that it would be more damaging to the party and to him and be more likely to result in a Democrat taking that position after the campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there may be something to that. So. Um, because I don't know, you just don't know how he's going to answer. I like that he's been unapologetic about it. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, own it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I already I, won now. What you going to do? <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that in some ways. It's, yeah. you know, like the, the cojones on this guy. Right. Um, you have to, yeah. you have to admire at some level, like <laughs> absolutely. so many people bow down to the pressure and it's nice to see somebody say, yep, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, force pumps, for, force their hand. Like I, yeah. I really enjoy people that are like willing to force people's hand. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I'm trying to be more one of those people myself. That's like, you know, if you, if you're going to tell me you're going to do something and like, you better be ready to follow through. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, cause I'm going to force you on it. And I'm armed. Exactly. <laughs> that too. <laughs> um, okay. Is, uh, anything else you want to say about no, Congress no, and so good. forth? Yeah. We spent way more time on this than I thought we would. Yeah. Um, all right. So the next thing that I, I wanted to bring up, do you want to go to the clip next or do you want to go to the clip? The... We can open with the clip. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, I shamelessly stole this clip from No Agenda. Um, they got it from some Kaiser report. No which shame I there. Those guys are heard. great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, um, we're gonna we're gonna play this in bits because I don't know. There's just things to say. There's a lot to say about it. Um, so I guess here we go. Davy Baker wasn't sure if she was going to get the COVID vaccine. They said it's gonna change your DNA. They came up with the vaccine too quickly. Misinformation that fueled rumors and divided communities across the country. But while the spread of COVID may have slowed since the height of the pandemic, the spread of misinformation has not. 
A recent survey shows one third of parents now oppose schools requiring children to get measles and other vaccines. In Oklahoma City, vaccination rates among school aged children have dropped four and a half percent over the last three years. We worry about things like measles, mumps, rubella, and other diseases that had largely been controlled, and now we're seeing increased hesitancy there. Thanks to misinformation. Thanks to misinformation. At a local clinic, Dr. Dale Bratzler says flu shots are down too, even as the nation deals with one of the worst flu seasons in years. We're only at about half of the typical number of flu uh, injections that we would typically see by this time of the year. It worries me to a great extent. Used to battling disease, the Oklahoma City Health Department now finds itself also fighting lies about vaccine safety. How dangerous is misinformation? It's cost lives. Misinformation has cost lives. Like (laughs) weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Yeah. The Gulf of Tonkin incident. Um, Assad gassing his people in Syria. He doesn't mean the government's misinformation. You're misunderstanding. Uh, You're thinking of the government's misinformation. He's talking about other people's misinformation. Okay. Like like the slubs, you know, that that believe this crazy stuff. Like, they pushed this vaccine out too quick. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. There hasn't been enough testing. Yeah. Um, Well, more on that later. All right. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. It's about as dangerous as it gets. The department has had to move resources to monitor public sentiment using new technology to comb through social media. Okay, and don't let that one slip you by. The new tools to comb through social media. That's like what the Twitter files have been about, is all these government agencies um, getting information from the the, um, uh, social media companies. Yeah, Uh, um, and it's more than just Twitter. Twitter is just what we know about. Well, what we know specifically about, but even in the Twitter files, they were saying that they were in contact with Facebook and Google and like all kinds of stuff. Yeah, all of Um, these guys. Reddit and so on. Yeah. Um, But yeah. (laughs) And they looked at at Twitter as the most difficult one to deal with, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, you know, so here we go. It's not just FBI, CIA, NSA, you know, all of um, NHS uh, or DHS, excuse me. Um, But NHS may be part of it. Uh, Oh, yeah. Case in point here. Like, okay, well, we're um, the public health agencies are using information that they can get from the. Social the media social media companies, media companies to yeah. track down purveyors of misinformation and what kind of information is out there. So I, I just, yeah, don't let that one slip, oh, slip yeah. past you. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. When vaccine messaging was drawing fire, the health department removed the word vaccine and added choose to its public service announcements. It worked. Wait, what? I, <laughs> okay, so I didn't hear this stuff. Um, yeah. I assume that they mean uh, like they changed it from uh, get your vaccine now to something like uh, make the choice for good health or, uh, uh. you know, choose to protect yourself or something like that. Well, that would make sense, but that's not the way it sounds. It definitely I, I comes off as we're going to take one word and use this word instead. Yeah. Like, <laughs> get your choice now. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I don't think that that's I don't think that's what they I don't know. Yeah. Um, Still, uh, they just, say it worked. So <laughs> apparently, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, whatever it is, they it made a better impression than what they had before. Uh, okay. So let's continue. We'll just go ahead and play it to the end from here. All right. Our negativity that we had on our, our all of our media platforms dropped immediately. It started going down because we had offered the choice as opposed to the message of getting vaccinated. At a time when funding cuts are already stretching health departments to the limit, having to put resources toward fighting misinformation is adding to the strain. Public health funding had been cut by almost 20 percent in the decade leading up to COVID. Public health departments did not have enough people and they did not have enough money. And that made their response really difficult. Typical government response there. We failed, so we need more money. Yeah. (laughs) The old failing up. Yep. (sighs) Yeah. Um, So, okay. Uh, That part does bother me also. The whole, um, well, we didn't have enough people or enough resources, and that's why we failed. So give us more. More money and more resources. Yeah. And and, more people. And so next time when we fail, we can tell you that it still wasn't enough. Starting to sound like Zelensky here, right? (laughs) Um, Yeah. 
But the the thing that I mostly wanted to focus on is that they're, although it's at the front part of the clip and we interrupted it over and over again. But anyway, yeah. there was a lot um, of digest in that clip. Yeah. A lot of things going on in there. <laughs> uh, is this idea that um, you know the the real problem through all of this is the uh, misinformation, disinformation. And I, I think that what they're failing to understand, like this is one of those uh, moments where they're just not aware of themselves, is that the, the misinformation, disinformation problem was from the government, media, and public health. Yeah. Well, the fact that you couldn't trust what those institutions were saying because it was one of those, you're going to believe the evidence of your own eyes or you're mm. going to believe what they're telling you. Yeah. I mean, how many people are going to continue to believe um, that uh, what public health media and government are telling them when they're when those groups are telling them that um, if you get vaccinated, you won't get sick and you won't pass it on to others when they got vaccinated, got sick and got their whole family sick. I mean, it's um, the problem of misinformation, the reason that. Okay, I guess really what we're talking about is that the reason that people are going to these other outlets for information is because they can't trust... They know they can't trust what the official propaganda is. Right. Like Because they know that's wrong because they've already seen it time and time again. Mm-hmm. So they go to other outlets to find at least and try to put it together themselves what's really going on. And sure, there is tons of misinformation out there. There's Absolutely. plenty of it. But the whole, but my favorite part of that is when they say that, um, oh, what was it? Yeah. But well, the va- vaccines were rushed out. Like, mm-hmm. how can you make an argument that they weren't? Yeah. Like, they how can you say that's not true? <laughs> were. Like, I mean, yeah. now you may have faith in those vaccines and that's fine, but they were rushed out. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no question about that. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually, I should have pulled it. Um, I came across a clip not that long ago. Uh, with Fauci, with Fauci saying that it takes uh, approximately a decade to fully test a vaccine for public consumption. Yeah, we had this one in what? A Less year? than a year. Less than a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, come on, like rushed out. Like, let's that see. Happened. When they when they still started really reporting on it was like February of of 2020, and they had the vaccines in November. Yeah. So there you go. Like giving them. Yeah, yeah, because it was right after the election. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't do, uh, um, phase three testing. Uh, they didn't do animal testing. Um, they did, there, there was a whole bunch of stuff that was left out. That just got skipped. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, the, they're trying to belittle that lady at the beginning. I don't think they're trying to belittle her. They're, they're actually, they're pointing out that she, I, I think they're trying to make the case that she realizes that all these things that she was being told are are, are false. Not true, yeah. But I can't remember exactly all the things that she said, but they were really almost all true, were they not? A lot of them were. I mean the the one uh, the one that stuck out to me was the they were the not vaccines enough time. were rough, rushed, but I mean the other one was that the vaccine changes your DNA. Oh yeah. Like okay. I mean I don't know about that. Um I mean I just don't know like yeah. um but regardless like I <laughs> oh my god i said regardless no you didn't i did <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, rewind the tape i will let it i will let it go I, we as soon as we're done recording i will point this out to you though all right uh, <laughs> everybody else heard that y'all all heard that right <laughs> we'll see the tape will tell the story <laughs> um <laughs> now i'm distracted by your terrible <laughs> grammar <laughs> no uh the the DNA thing, like, that's such a weird question anyway. I, I mean, it, there is... What the mRNA vaccine does, actually, is deliver instructions to your cell of how to create the spike the protein. The spike proteins, yeah. yeah. I mean, so that is... By technicality. That, that is a DNA change. It's, like, not, I guess... It, it's not like a fundamental change. But, yeah. Um, well, I mean... I mean, Do I don't know. Really I'm know. asking. I'm asking. I like, mean, there's I some question know. about yeah. that in the long run, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um, but at least at the cellular level, there has to be some kind of genetic change to yeah. to put these instructions into your cells of how to build this protein. Yeah. Because that's exactly what DNA does is instruct your cells how to build proteins. Yeah. And 
And the difference between this vaccine and the others is that normally what a vaccine would do is just have your body create an immune response. Right. But that's not what's happening here. It's actually telling your body to produce something. Yeah, how to create the toxic part of the of the disease. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, like I say, I'm not in the weeds and all of that, but I'm not going to trust anything that... I'm sorry, is that empty? It Did is. You look? Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. No, yeah, that's the I've put it back up there. I okay, that. that's, <laughs> that's my bad. that's not where that goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, I, I just I found that clip interesting, be, mostly because of the lack of awareness of their own misinformation, disinformation yeah. that created the problem that they're complaining about. Yeah, um, well, and they're, they're complaining that the that now the 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 regular like accepted vaccines the the levels are dropping on people getting those mm -hmm. um, but this is still a, a problem of their own creation yeah it's the same thing like okay well i i now know that everything or a lot of what they told me about the vaccine that i just took yeah was false yeah or they had no way so of knowing so now now i'm going to start questioning all the vaccines exactly it's it's that guy it's the Owen Benjamin syndrome, yeah. right? Um, it's that guy who realized that one of the conspiracies was true and now thinks they must all be. They must all be true. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's a good way to put that. <laughs> um, you know, like, so they're not all true. I, I, yeah. I mean, there's clearly benefit to some of these older vaccines, oh, the absolutely. MMR vaccine and, you know, all, all these things that they've been given since the 70s or whatever. Yeah. That, um, that are or, tried or, and true. Tried and true. Yeah. And were administered before the liability shield. Ah, there's that's another <laughs> layer there to unravel. Yeah. Um, now that there's a liability shield, there's just generally less interest in investing the resources to make sure that everything's safe. Yeah. Right? I mean, it, it just follows. Yeah, exactly. Just so, less, less repercussions if something bad mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. You if, if you take away the risk then you you encourage more risky behavior. Yeah. Um, in the same way that like bailing out the banks makes the banks more likely to loan out money to people that that are a dangerous investment yeah. because they know that they essentially that the public pays for their losses and they get to privatize the the revenues. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, you're doing the same thing with vaccine companies or with pharma companies by giving them a liability shield. You're saying that if something goes terribly wrong, the taxpayer will pay for it. Yeah. But as long as everything goes fine, then you get to reap the rewards. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, that's all I really have about that. I just, I, I just find it really interesting that even at this point, they don't recognize their own blunder. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely something to that. Um, or they're, I don't know. They're just not owning up to what, to the part that they played in this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, they're, and you're right. They're not the only ones. Like, there's plenty of misinformation, disinformation out oh. there from alternative sources. But the reason that people are looking at alternative sources is because they know there was misinformation and disinformation in the official sources. Yep. Exactly. And there still is. Yeah. And this isn't over somehow. Yeah. I, right. Like, somehow, um, there's still being mask requirements in some schools and things like that. Even though, uh, oh gosh. Um, I don't know, some, I can't remember who it was now, um, but one of the government officials in the public health sector, yeah. federal officials, recently said that you won't find any study that shows that masks work. Yeah. It's because they don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I remember when that Danish study came out like it, towards the end of 2020. Yeah. That's when I stopped wearing a mask. Like I was, I was following that rule too. Like, cause it follows, yeah. it makes sense. You have a respiratory virus that's airborne. Like, okay, the mask can have some effect on whether, um, yeah. you know, depending on circumstances, you know, whether this can be spread. Um, but as soon as that Danish study came out that said, well, yeah, there was no difference in infection rates between the masked and the unmasked group. Yeah. I was like, well, forget this. This is uncomfortable. I don't <laughs> like this. It's a waste of time. Yeah, exactly. I don't need yeah. my face blanky. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, and I got some really nasty looks for a while. Of course, yeah. I couldn't tell because they were masked. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm sure that there were nasty <laughs> but looks. there were nasty the, looks behind those masks. <laughs> you can see it in the eyes. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? <laughs> They're glaring at you. <laughs> He's not following the rules. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one last topic and then, and then we're done yeah. for the night. Um, 
and, and this is a you know back to Ukraine. I so this to me somehow like you listen to people talk about uh, like media personalities talk about the most important stories of 2022. Yeah. And somehow it's like the Mar-a-Lago raid yeah. and I don't know, something to do with Trump and, and something else to do with Trump yeah. and how terrible he is. But to me, it seems really obvious that the most important story of 2022 is the Russia Ukraine war. Yeah. Well, I don't know how that's, I don't know how that's a debate. <laughs> yeah. This is the most dangerous thing going on in the world. I don't know, man. I thought that triple demic was it, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the tridemic, man. <laughs> tridemic would have sounded better. They were saying triple demic. They're saying right triple demic, yeah. Yeah. But I'm starting it here, the tridemic. Tridemic. He's starting it here. All right. <laughs> yeah, because we got enough listeners well, that, that believe in this kind of crap that would push it, right? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I just, uh, you know, talking about um, lobbying and so forth with, uh, you know, I was thinking about it when I was talking about the uh, – Tony, Scott Morrison? Yes. Yeah, earlier. Um, and and just foreign influence on our government. And foreign powers, it seems to me at this point, probably have a greater influence on our government than we do. Than the people? Uh, than the, yeah, the citizens of the United States. Um, Zelensky is a good example. Yeah. Right? Like the whole Ukraine thing is a good example. And uh, Ukraine employs a tremendous amount of lobbyists. Um, they spent tons of money in DC, yeah. uh, over the last year and they were spending a lot of money in DC before that too. It's yeah. not I like mean, it yeah, I mean, started getting, with this war. Yeah. I mean, they've been getting money from us for a while. So, um, <laughs> there was recently a party at the, uh, Ukraine embassy in DC, um, celebrating the founding of the Ukrainian military whenever that was. Hmm. And, um, this the celebration uh, was sponsored by Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, and Lockheed Martin. You can't make this stuff up. Well, I, I you know <laughs> I probably wouldn't have believed it. Like I I heard it from a pretty reliable source. It was um oh I don't remember who. It was somebody on the Scott Horton show though. Okay. Um that was that was talking about it and sure uh, wasn't the Onion or the Babylon Bee. No, it wasn't. Because <laughs> it sounds like that's the like origin story for that's the headline for a Babylon Bee post. <laughs> you you would think that, except that then the No Agenda show was talking about it, and they actually posted a scan of the invitation that had these groups logos on the invitation. Like good night, man. No shame, right? Yeah. Like they. It's, uh, what would Scott Horton say? He would say, they don't even know to be embarrassed. Yeah, there you go. Right. And, um, this, this is the only, this is the only beneficiary of this policy that we seem to be holding. Yeah. Is these groups. Um, cause it's just draining the American people's coffers and our ability to defend ourselves. Cause like we're not producing this stuff as fast as they're using it. Yeah. Um, the uh, the head of the Ukrainian military recently said that we can win this. We just need um, 300 tanks, 450 uh, combat vehicle, infantry fighting vehicles. I, like, I can't remember what all he asked for. But what he asked for was bigger than almost every army in Europe. <laughs> well, and that, what's crazy to me is even if you gave them every bit of that, like, it's, it's different because they're defending ground. Mm -hmm. Like... I, you're never going to stop. I mean, the Russian military is just too big yeah. for them to stop this. Like they're not, they're just not going to be able to do it. They, they don't have the ability to replace their losses in the same way that the Russians do. Yeah. And, um, if you listen to, uh, some of the military commentators like, um, uh, Douglas McGregor or, um, oh gosh, who's the other one that I was listening to a bunch recently, um, that was talking about, uh, talking about these things. Can't remember. Um, there's another colonel in the, well, retired colonel in the U.S. Army, though. Yeah. Um, but they were saying that the there's like a 20-fold difference in the number of artillery um, shells that are being fired by either side. So yeah. it's it's something like um, the Ukrainians are firing uh, six artillery shells a day, and the Russians are firing 120. Yeah. <laughs> Which like, side of that firing line you want to be on? Yeah, and, and just from those numbers alone, you you know yeah. that the Ukrainians have to be losing more than the Russians are. Yeah. And in every single one of these maneuvers, like, they, you know, 
so the Ukrainians have been pressed because of their situation to try and show some big victories. Yeah. And they've achieved some victories, yeah. um, taking over territory that the Russians had held for a while. But like you get the impression that they that they, you know, they had this great battle and and soundly defeated the Russians, chasing them off into the night or whatever. Yeah. But what happened in almost all of these situations is that the Russians found themselves at a at a tactical disadvantage and withdrew. Yeah. And then and gave up the territory. Well, and not only that, they withdrew their soldiers so they could just carpet bomb the territory. Yeah, well, artillery. Artillery. But, well, yeah. yeah, like yeah, just like completely decimate. And you because you don't want your guys down there when you do that. Yeah. Like so, yeah, you pull your guys back and you bring in the air power. Yeah, uh, and and doing a fighting with withdrawal in in a sense to um you know create backline defensive lines that are still able to inflict casualties as you withdraw. I mean. In in a war of attrition, which is what this is, yeah, um, Ukraine just doesn't have the manpower or the material to keep up with Russia. They can't replace their losses as easily. They don't have as many. Uh, they don't have as much equipment or as many people to begin with. No, yeah. they cannot win. No, yeah. they can't win. No, yeah. um, and I I hope that that's becoming increasingly clear. I did uh, see a poll recently where. Um, something like a, a third of American voters, uh, like probable voters in the U.S. that were polled, um, believed that Ukraine was winning, which means that two thirds didn't. Yeah, uh, and that's reassuring to me. <laughs> yeah, um, I like that there's some doubt there, but it, it's, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to it's hard to imagine the average citizen in, in this being able to wade through the kind of propaganda that's out there and recognize what's really happening. Yeah. Well, I mean, you say that, but the same thing was going on during COVID too. Like That's the true. propaganda wave was incredible. And a lot of people saw through it. Of course, not it enough. Was all, not enough. And, uh, and also I was going to say, like, I still have arguments with people about some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well, and the the other difference is, is the the COVID war was happening at home. Yeah, this is a thousand miles away. Well, know. the real problem is that while maybe two thirds of Americans don't believe that the Ukrainians are winning, most of them don't care either. Yeah, well, that's just it. It's just not an issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you have to create a direct line between that we're supporting this war with your money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's money that's not being spent here in the U S um, blowing up my Medicare I did money. actually also here, like as long as we're on that. Um, and just before we close out, um, just so that people are, are aware that this is going on. Cause this definitely isn't getting any coverage. Um, there were some rocket strikes in Syria on U S troops. Oh really? No, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Rocket strikes in Syria on U S troops, so U S troops that were guarding a um an oil platform or oil well or whatever for Conoco. It was the Conoco. They were they were attacked at the Conoco base and Conoco. You know Conoco Phillips Conoco. The, yeah, yeah. Um, that's where was I got the my one gas that, <laughs> that was manning the uh the oil pumps. Really? Um, yeah. So uh, we have U.S. troops guarding um uh, a company that's just stealing oil from Syria. It's funny because like the big argument against libertarians, you know, is or anarchists as, as mm -hmm. we would be called, um, is, you know, oh, you know, corporations will just take over and build their own armies. Mm -hmm. Well, like in this scenario, they, they, the corporation didn't have to build their own armies. Yeah. They've got the U S army. I, I will make the case over and over again until I'm blue in the face that it is expensive to maintain an army. Yeah. And the only people that can maintain an army is are people that can steal money to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that might not then, only be the government, but yeah. generally speaking, that's the government. <laughs> it just blows my mind that we've got U.S. Marines out there protecting Conoco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that they can steal money, ship it across the border into Iraq, and then ship it back here. Wow. Amazing. Or wherever they're shipping it. I don't know. Maybe yeah. they're selling it to the Europeans now since we cut off their Russian gas. Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, that was another thing too. <laughs> I can go off on these yeah. little things over and over. Um, I, I just heard a clip, uh, on yesterday's no agenda, um, when I was driving home from work today, um, where they were talking about, uh, Germany, um, kind of shifting their energy focus and that they had to build several new platforms to receive, uh, LNG liquid natural gas on their coast. Yeah. Um, and 
so this is like one of those situations like we talk about after storms and so forth where you're like, okay, well, um, this is a good thing, right? Because they just built uh, all these platforms that created jobs for the construction people and then it's going to create jobs for the people that have to man them and bring them in. And But the problem is that um, they were fulfilling their energy needs before. And yeah. the reason that they hadn't done this is because this is more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> and that all of this money that they're using to create this thing, they wouldn't have needed to. Yeah. That money could have been sent to other places and they would have still gotten their energy if they were getting energy from Russia still. Yeah. They were getting cheaper energy. They wouldn't have had to invest the resources in creating new inlets, I guess, for other energy sources. Yeah. It's not actually creating jobs. It's wasting money. Yeah, right. That could have been used to create other jobs. Good and jobs. Yeah, good good union paying jobs. <laughs> hey, there Wait, you go. Good high paying union jobs. Isn't that Biden's thing? Yeah. Um, and so what you've actually done is that you've created a less, uh, like the reason that they were doing things the way they were doing before is because it was more efficient than the alternative. Yeah. And now you're forcing them to pay to create the alternative as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which all of those prices will be passed on to the customer, I'm sure, oh, yeah. when it comes Absolutely. time to pay that power bill. Yeah. Oh, well, the Germans definitely know that. Oh, yeah, because it's real over there right mm -hmm. now. So. Um, so we can close on that before I find something else to talk about. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, we expect to be back here next week. Um in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Podbean. I need like a little script so that I don't have to like search my head for all of these things every time. Yeah. Um, yeah subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and or Podbean. Um, like and share. Uh, tell your friends. Um, comment. Uh, all the things. Leave reviews. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. All, all the things. That, all the things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the more interaction, the better. Yeah. Uh, you guys are disappointingly non-interactive. Uh, there are like a few people <laughs> yeah. that you, you, we regularly get comments from or, or interaction. And most of you are very silent. This is disappointing to me. Yeah, all right. I'm disappointed. <laughs> One more interaction. Yeah. Come on. We need a community here. <laughs> Blow Mike's email up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael at the Liberty .com. Do it. That's me. You can find me there. I, I actually receive those emails. Don't send it to my Yahoo account. <laughs> All right. We've had this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. So in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.